a second. I, I think I'm dying. Hey, I'm Nick Byer. Welcome to Pocket News for Tuesday, the 27th of September. Today on the show, The Division's divided servers and shooting from chandeliers. I don't want to get sick. All right, here's what's been making headlines. And after a few delays, Ubisoft have finally gone live with their Division test servers. The test servers are designed to give the loyal fan base the option to install patches and updates which are still not finalized, but mainly allow Ubisoft to test things which are probably heaps broken. At the moment, players who sign up will access update 1.4, which is not due to roll out until October. At this point, they won't be able to bring their own level 30 characters across, but will be able to create a server-specific one. It's quite a fitting parallel to the game's quarantine procedures. If you wish to partake, you will be downloading the entire 45 gig worth of The Division again, as it will need to exist separately from the pure, uninfected form of the game. It can't be worth it, right? It's basically Ubisoft just crowdsourcing QA on a game that's already out. Moving on, and there are two new games coming out from two little cool devs. I assume the studios are cool and little, not two little people who have made interesting video games. But I would play it. Overnight, Yotan developer Thunder Lotus Games revealed their next project, a Lovecraftian horror brawler called Sundered. The game has the same boss battle focus of Yotan, but will have more of a Metroidvania style progression. And Choice Provisions tease that they were working on the next title in their Bit Trip series, Runner 3. The Runner series has traditionally been quite challenging, but this next installment aims to give lower skill players a smoother ride without penalty. And their press release is really speaking my language. Too often, games focus on rewarding hardcore players and perpetuating the idea that if you play on easy, you're somehow less of a gamer. What if games don't bring you as much joy if they're ultra-challenging? Maybe that doesn't make you less. Maybe that makes you, you. Now imagine that read by Tom Hanks. I'd cry into his chest all night. And finally, soon you're going to be able to watch Firewatch. Developer Campo Santo has teamed up with production company Good Universe to make a film about the game. Hey, it's a better idea than the Tetris Trilogy. The two companies have actually agreed to work together beyond this Firewatch film. Campo Santo founder Sean Vanneman said about Good Universe, quote, We were floored by how they recognize, cultivate, and produce incredible stories. It's rare you meet another group that shares so many of your values and makes the process of creating things even more exciting. I'll be honest, I don't think Firewatch needs to become a film. I think the story works perfectly as a video game. In fact, I think it works better as a video game, but who am I kidding? I will totally watch this, particularly if they include the scene that I created trying to electrocute naked teens with a boombox. I'm taking this. I'm gonna drop it in the water. You made me do this. Cool it with the fireworks. Please just put it down. Fight another Asshole. firework and it won't be your stereo Iraq. Yeah, it'll be your faces. All right, now it's time for Thing of the Day. Today's Thing of the Day graphic was a response to a previous comment by me about his Thing of the Day graphic, Connor Masters, who doesn't even have the courage to compose his own music. All right, until we next assemble my book, see you, Nick Bayer. <laughs>
the little the little child, little angle biter, she's there sitting with me. It's a good one. We review Recall, Forza Horizon 3, and I have a first play of The Tomorrow Children. 8.30 p.m. ABC 2, and this afternoon on the Pocket YouTube channel, I have a first play of Battle Ride, which is a new kind of like brawler, MOBA thing. It's pretty cool. Now, EB Expo is on this weekend in Sydney. If you are in Sydney or the Sydney area, if you are going to EB Expo and you don't have tickets to our live show, which is a lot of conditions, I understand, but we kind of need to put that on there. I have Pocketeer exclusive tickets to our three live shows that we're doing this weekend. So there's an 11.30 a.m. Saturday sh session, there's a 4 p.m. Saturday session, and there is a 9.30 a.m. Sunday session. So if you want to come to one of these three sessions, let us know in the comments. So put your full name, the session you want to attend, and if you want one or two tickets, if you're that person who is lucky enough to have a friend to come along with you. We will leave the tickets at the reception there, uh, so you'll need to show your ID when you come pick them up. Tickets are on a first come first serve basis, so get in quick and we will let you know with a reply to your comment in our comments if you're lucky enough to nab a ticket. If you want a friend, if you want more than one friend, then join the Pocket Days Facebook group and Steam group. There are links for everything I just said in the description below. Today's thing of the day graphic was made again by Connor Masters, who seems to be making not a very well veiled threat to me there. If you've made a thing like Connor, please set it in. Until we next send my Pocket Nick by out. Mwah! Connor! Don't think I haven't noticed that you still haven't composed original music. You had one job. And that job was to look sexy in a headband. Job accomplished. Forza Horizon 3 is there though because I've played it and it's so, so, so good. FIFA 17 because I just had so much damn fun in the demo with John. And Serial Cleaner because it's a cool twist on stealth games and I like the idea of removing blood from video games and not adding to it.